हरि ओम जेंटली क्लोज योर आईज योर फिंगर इज इंटरलेज एंड प्लेस इन फ्रंट योर बैक नेक एंड हेयर डायरेक्ट breathing is normal we will chant the mantra om followed by the invocatory prayer सहना सहना भुन सह वीर घर वह तेजस्वीतमस्तु विषा वह Shlokas from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter four, verses one to ten, please. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, Imam Vivaswate Yogam, Prokta Vanah Mauvyam. विवस्वान्मन वे प्राह मनुरीक्ष्वाक वे ब्रवीत एवं परंपरा प्राप्त इमं राजर्षयो विदु सकाले नेह महता योगो नष्ट परंत पुरातन भक्त मे सखा चेती रहस्यम हेतुत्तम अर्जुन उवाच अपरंभवतो जन्म परम जन्म विवस्वत कथमेतिया प्रोक्तवानी श्री भगवाच बहूनी मे व्यतीता जन्मा तव चाजुन वेद सर्वाणी नेत परंतप 
अजोपिसन्नव्ययात्मा भूतानामीश्वरोपिसन् प्रकृतिम् स्वामध्यस्थाये संभवाम्यात्ममायया यदा यदा हि धर्मस्य ग्लानेर भवति भारत अभ्युत्थानम धर्मस्य तदात्मानम् श्रीजाम यहम् परित्राणाय साधुनाम विनाशाय च दुष्कृताम धर्म संस्थापनार्थाय संभवामि युगे युगे जन्म कर्म च में देवयम् ये वं योगे तितत्वतः त्यक्तवते हम पुनर्जन्म नैति मामे ति सूर्जुना वीतरा घबय क्रोधा हा मनमया मामु पाश्रिता हा बहवो न्यान तपसा पूता मत भाव मागता हा Cleanliness, Atman is pure, there is no impurity in Atman, there is no malaha, dirt, vasana in Atman, this is equivalent to there is no darkness in sun. There is only light in sun. Same way, there is only purity, absolute purity in Atman. So there is no contamination of vasanas. It's free of vasanas. How do we, where do we start? Start from the cleansing process is started from the external environment. Be aware of the dirt outside in the world. Then be aware of uh, the gross dirt at the physical level. Keep the physical body clean <coughs> then the dirt at the mind level feelings emotions worry anxiety free of uh, attachment then dirt at the intellect level, the thoughts and ideas, arrogance and ego, free of that. Nir mamaha, nirahankaraha, minus and inus, m-i-n-e-n-e-s-s, minus and I-ness, Ahankar, Mamaha, and then at the Vasana level, last class we were discussing about the three Gunas, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, S, R and T. <laughs> S for Sattva, R for Rajas and T for Tamas. S, R and T is equivalent to 100% in a human being. 
the proportion of uh, sattva, rajas and tamas varies from person to person and hence there is a homogeneous variety of human beings. Why human beings are different? Their nature is different. Externally a person may look alike. Twins, triplets. But internally they are different because the nature, inner innate tendency, the vasana, sattva, rajas and tamas, their proportion is different. Spiritual sadhana practice is getting rid of tamas, laziness, inertia, giving a proper direction to rajas, action by picking up higher values, by fixing an ideal which is beyond ego and egocentric desires is meant here as giving direction. That direction is uh, upwards in all religion when we pray we keep our palms open like this as though you know we are looking up and all the time even when our eyes are closed the focus is somewhere upwards not downwards So giving a proper direction to, uh, you know, towards that ideal, the common cause. As a result, the lower tendencies slowly drop off. By this method, what happens is, we are getting rid, since we want to attain an ideal, out of 24 hours, if we are going to sleep lazy, then we can't attain our ideal. Therefore, once we fix that ideal, the cause, the, that cause gives us the inspiration to work. Therefore, greater the purpose, greater the inspiration to work. So what happens is, you are, you know, sleeping. To that extent, your need is not more than what your need is. Therefore, we are getting rid of uh, laziness. We are active. <laughs> Arjuna is given the name conqueror of sleep. That doesn't mean 24 by 7, 24 hours he is awake. alert, brisk, aware of, conscious of, alertness, that's what matters. Conqueror of sleep means alertness. When you are, to what extent do you have to give, take rest, you take rest, not less or more, and active because you want to attain a purpose. And Sattva here is that uh, purity. So what happens is when a person is getting rid of uh, tamas and giving a proper direction to rajas, then what happens? Sattva is enhanced. Purity is enhanced. Today we are going to discuss about how we are going to focus on the mind giving a proper direction to the higher and then getting rid of that rajas. <coughs> so, spiritual sadhana is getting rid of tamas, giving a proper direction to rajas and enhancing sattva. Since sattva by itself cannot uh, sustain itself as a single quality it gets transformed into trans sattva guna atita beyond the gunas 
self realization is described as a person who has attained self realization has got no gunas he has risen above all the gunas because the person has no uh, tamas tamasic quality is not there that doesn't mean self realized person is always awake again see these are all uh, confusing terms purposely to confuse you and me because you would have read some books here and there written by spiritual masters they don't sleep they don't require sleep they don't require food then you also practice the same thing and become a zombie and become emaciated never in the bhagavad gita all these qualities are mentioned where a person does not require sleep a person does not require air a person does not air here is oxygen you don't have to shut yourself in a chamber devoid you know avoiding oxygen this is this is not spirituality no word is mentioned in the vedas <coughs> so to come back here the mind cleansing the mind first of all what is mind mind is part of subtle body subtle body is constituted of manaha buddhi i'll explain you sastra terms manaha buddhi chit and ahankar manaha mind buddhi intellect chit conditioned consciousness and ahankar ego so these four constitute the subtle body what do you mean by subtle body there are three bodies gross body subtle body and the causal body not casual body <laughs> causal c a u s a l if you casually read then you will read the causal body as casual body <laughs> in the vedanta treatises i was conducting a class in you know in one place and uh, the the procedure that we follow is uh, each class member read a paragraph and then uh, we take up uh, discussion personal experiences first the understanding of the text what swami parsarthi is talking about and then uh, maybe personal examples uh, to substantiate that point so we were there in three states of consciousness dream uh, waking dream and deep sleep state of consciousness at that time there was a line there uh, three bodies you know gross body subtle body and uh, causal body so i was uh, obviously i was you know going through uh, the text as the other person was reading and then he read uh, gross body subtle body and casual body for a moment uh, see when in uh, vedanta treatises there is no word casual so when that person casually read as uh, you know casual body instead of causal body that was a, a jerk a momentary pause in my mind suddenly my intellect uh, awoke and I woke up and then i said excuse me what did you read then he read again gross body subtle body and causal body oh i'm very sorry sir beg your pardon <laughs> hmm alertness alertness is required because what is there in the mind though you see that words there what is there in the mind automatically uh, you read it so eyes don't see that word you read what is there in your mind are you all following me it happens right yes very much bell is ringing 
telephone bell is ringing, calling bell, somebody is at the door. We don't hear it. It's not that we are deaf. You're reading uh, a novel. Somebody is standing there next to you. You don't know that they are standing. It's not that you are blind. Temporarily, the mind is uh, cut off, switched off. Switched off in the sense, since you are engrossed in the text, you are not able to hear that sound. Since you are engrossed in the text, you are not able to see that somebody is standing. That's all it means. What is it we are discussing? <coughs> Forgotten. This is one way of uh, testing you. Otherwise, uh, in Vedanta, where is the test? We don't have pen and paper. Then how do you test you? How can I test you? Anybody? Yes. Ah, you are right. We were discussing. Subtle body, correct. Therefore, we brought in the three bodies gross, subtle, and causal. What is this gross body? Very good. Physical body. Subtle body? Mind and intellect. Casual. <laughs> causal body? Vasanas. I think uh, we can wind up this class because you all become, uh, you have acquired uh, enough knowledge here. You are fit for uh, conducting Vedanta classes because you have heard enough, enough of uh, Vedanta. Now it is to preach. You don't agree? Yes. Next step is sadhana, practice. I always used to get fascinated by this uh, Hero, Hero Honda advertisement. Long back, nowadays though, that advertisement doesn't come. I always used to get fascinated. The advertisement, it does, anybody remember that? The old advertisement. Yes, very true. Fill it, shut it and forget it. <laughs> Outstanding. I don't know who, who has uh, thought about it. Has to be uh, brilliant. But we are. I am connecting it here. You know to this knowledge. Fill it. Fill it with this knowledge of life and living. Fill yourself with the knowledge of Vedanta. So you can't fill this knowledge in your pockets your trouser pocket, uh, your kurta pocket, like how, like how fellows go to the exam hall with, uh, you know, big papers, tiny, you know, the fellow has written so tiny, the amount of time he has spent in writing, he could have spent in studying, but he believes in uh, the copying. So therefore, he the whole night he was sitting and then writing so because he can't write and he can't carry a whole book, right? So he, he needs a very small bit paper so that it is you know maybe uh, kept under the paper his answer sheet, a cushion paper, or uh, his in his uh, shirt palm somewhere so that it is not noticed by the invigilator also and he's not caught. So. That tiny letters, and he should uh, know what he has written. That is the beauty in that. Now, why I am saying this? That fellow, you know, believes in this. So, we are talking about uh, fill it, fill yourself with knowledge. So it is not filling up in your pockets. The mind has to be filled with the knowledge. The intellect has to decide what knowledge has to be put inside the mind. 
you can put trash in the mind trash in the sense is all worldly knowledge that is not trash you need that information at the right time that's about all it is like uh, something like this at one time now whatever knowledge we have gained our intellect has uh, decided this is the knowledge i have to gain <laughs> need not be vedanta it can be on any subject computer science because it goes i explain you why computer science here some engineering subject so right now that knowledge is important therefore we have put it in our mind after one year because almost every month the knowledge is getting obsolete after one year what knowledge you have gained in the past is of no value because value addition has taken place and at that time one year one year hence again the intellect is saying whatever knowledge you have gained has to be removed erased and then fresh knowledge has to be taken in five years down the line what happens all that knowledge you have gained in the past is of no use same way what is right now correct now may may not be correct five years afterwards so in that sense the intellect should decide what knowledge to be taken in so if this knowledge is continuously changing knowledge is changing in the sense according to time what is correct what is just what is right then is there any knowledge which will be applicable at all times which will not change according to time tricky no that knowledge we should gain and that is what is true knowledge so that intellect decides this is what knowledge i have to gain puts it in the mind fill it to the brim not less not more shut it so we are discussing about hero hold advertisement connecting it to vedanta shut it make sure there are no dissipation of energy dissipation of knowledge when i say fill it here fill it with knowledge and trans put it into practice abhyasa is done and transform that knowledge into wisdom and shut it shut it means make sure there are no leakages there are no dissipation of knowledge in this context example water is getting filled into the reservoir if there are uh, tiny holes leaks cracks in the reservoir the tank then any amount of water getting filled will slowly get dissipated then the reservoir will not get filled up fill it shut it so at the level of filling with knowledge the intellect should decide what knowledge to be filled in and at the when you are aware that this is the knowledge and you have filled it it is again the intellect which should be aware that the knowledge or wisdom is not dissipated and forget it forget it in this context is not forgetting this knowledge because knowledge is all already put into practice and get got transformed to wisdom forget it means do not be result oriented i have put in so many years of tapas austerity gained this knowledge and now i am a reservoir of knowledge there are no takers nobody is interested to take this knowledge don't get agitated not be result oriented friends when the reservoir is full of water 
no reservoir in India or any for that matter anywhere in the world has been left unattended. People they draw pipes, is it not? And they take water from that. They lay pipes and draw water from the from the reservoir. Same way, when the knowledge taken in liberally, not with that servile intention, then when that knowledge is filled in and it is shut it completely sealed and you simply forget about it people will automatically come and take that knowledge from you lord krishna was not waiting whether any disciple will come and learn from him or not when that disciple in the form of arjuna surrendered to him then Krishna gave that knowledge to him, to Arjuna. So you don't have to feel bad. I spent so many years gaining this knowledge and there are no takers. Nobody is interested in this knowledge. All that you have to do is, all that your duty is, fill it and shut it. It may be useful immediately. It may not be useful this lifetime. Who knows? But our business is to gain this knowledge as much as possible and shut ourselves and say, forget about it. That is our primary duty. <coughs> That is how we can explain people at the very young age itself, they become great teachers, great masters. They would have not gone to any educational institutions in this lifetime. Then from where have they gained that knowledge to uh, disseminate that knowledge? Whatever would be the subject. This is how you can explain it. So coming back to our subject here, the mind. Mind is part of subtle body, which is constituted of uh, mind, intellect, conditioned consciousness and ahankar. Subtle body means thoughts. So here I am not differentiating emotions and uh, you know feelings and all that emotions and feelings are also thoughts then how do we define mind and intellect <clears throat> condition consciousness and uh, ego when thoughts today's thoughts are whatever we have gained from the past if the thoughts today gained from the past, if it is not discriminated, not questioned and you mechanically act upon that thought, then we say that it is the mind. When we give an example, it becomes easy to understand this. So indiscriminate thought is mind, discriminated thought is intellect. So mind and intellect is it's a term which is based on the function of the thoughts. We'll continue. We'll continue again. You know, we'll continue the discussion again. Hari